Hi, everybody. I am Gerrit Lanning. I am the CEO of Community Keepers, operating uh, in and around Cape Town and also Stellenbosch. Awesome. Hi, Gerrit. Hi, Nokatula. How are you today? <laughs> Very good, thank you. Um, <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about the great work that you do at Community Keepers. Um, I do know that mental health is it's a huge issue. It doesn't just um, affect adults, it, it also affects children. Um, and I do know that one of your outreach programs ensures that uh, learners' basic needs are met. Can you tell us how do you do this? Mm, for sure. So, so I think the important thing for me to start with is to say that I really believe that educators in general care about kids, care about the children that they serve, care about their learners, but their main purpose is education. I mean, an educator is supposed to teach and now they're sitting with kids in their classes who are really in need of something more than education. Yeah. And in that way, a lot of our edu educators have started coming to us saying to us, but I'm sitting with a problem um, and, and not a child, being the problem, but the problem being that kids are coming to school, they're traumatized, they are not in a good state, and then teachers have to teach them. Yeah. So for us, um, working in the schools where we are uh, permanently placed, that's quite easy. We have got a direct link to our educators, we do professional development with them, we've got a very nice feedback loop with them, um, and in a sense, our services to the educators is an empowerment of them being able to, to support the learners up to a point and then to refer them onwards to us um, if, if they need a little bit more professional support. Yeah. So we, we kind of form a partnership. Obviously, educators where we are not in a school, um, somewhat more difficult. But um, during the pandemic, we also pivoted a little bit towards technology. And therefore, we have started creating quite a... I wouldn't say, say an abundance, but at least a, quite a quite a bit of digital material that educators can really use with a lot of fruit. Yeah. Um, and 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 they are ba the basics of how you can support a learner. A little bit of an understanding around what trauma is, how trauma would present typically in a class or in a learner, and kind of veering away from this notion that kids are just naughty or kids are just disruptive or disturbing. Yeah. Um, I think linked to that practical classroom tips, gender-based violence is of course a huge thing these days and, yeah. and linked to, to bullying in general, how, how to identify, how to intervene. Um, so those are all practical tips that we've literally packaged in, in digital format yeah. and they are available on our website. They are also available on our partner website, the Milani website. Um, I can give you some of the links now or later. Yeah, yeah, please, yes, yes. Okay, so our website is just easy, um, it's our name. So it's www.communitykeepers, plural, because we're in it as, um, not just as individuals, we're in okay. it uh, as uh, as a group, um, .org. Okay, awesome. Communitykeepers.org. Okay, okay, fantastic. Um, how many communities, if you have a number in mind, I know... You have about, I think, 31 communities that you deal with. Um, like, is it like just Cape Town or is it the rest of South Africa? How, how does it work? I, I, I wish I could say the rest of South Africa. <laughs> um, as a side note to anybody listening who haven't got a community keeper's office yet in their school or in their community, please join our waiting list. We, we're really ambitious in that way. And it's not about us wanting to expand it. It's just that. I believe there should be a community keeper's office in every single school right. in the country. Yeah. So, yeah, the reality at this stage is that we're in 31 schools. Um, we're we're aiming for at least 35 towards the end of the year. Mm. Um, next year, we really want to go on a bit of a push uh, towards expansion. We're aiming to open up another 40 schools um, or offices in schools. We're aiming to go interprovincial next year. At this stage, we're based only in the Western Cape, very much in the Cape Peninsula, what we call the Cape Town area, including areas like Easter River, um, also towards the Santa Kral, the Urbanville side, mm. um, and and then and then spread all across. Um, but but then also quite a big footprint in Stellenbosch or in the Greater Stellenbosch area or in the in the Winelands area, where we also serve the towns of Klapmuts and 
French hook and call more um, uh, all around there. Yeah. And dealing with children, children come from different backgrounds and they are a product of, of their background. Some, some will come across as aggressive, some stubborn, some angry and anxious, um, which could pose a challenge. How do you then tackle that? Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting question because I, I don't think it's really a challenge for us because the time that a child gets to us, our challenges are a little bit more the bigger scheme of things. So obviously the social determinants that causes all of that behavior, because yeah. that is our big thing. We we think that um, when, when you talk about these kind of things, it's it's about perceptions. It's about stigma more than the realities that we're working with. So yeah. our challenge is about changing perceptions, changing the stigma that surrounds mental health. Um, perceptions are, are difficult in the way that uh, I think, as I mentioned, Behavior, for instance, disruptive behavior or angry behavior often is labeled with a naughty child or a problem child kind of label. Mm. And, and those for us are, are nearly as big as the problem itself. Yeah. So, so what we try and promote are environments mm. where we go that one step further by asking the question, so why is this child? And then to rather focus on the how can we help with the problem behind the behavior or yeah. the problem behind the anger um, as, as, a, as a way to actually move forward? Mm. It's quite interesting. Um, there's, there's something that I found. It's called um, evidence-based standard tools that you introduced this year. Can you tell us what that is about? I know it, it, it incorporates some of the SDGs. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, in, in general, obviously, we are in health, and, and that, that is SDG3. Yeah. So it, within health, we're in mental health and, and well-being specifically. And within the SDGs, well-being is kind of the target um, state, if you want to call it that. So, so the SDGs and, and also the World Health Organization are saying we should try and promote mental well-being. And then mental well-being um, can be can be measured with, as you suggested, with a whole range of standardized tools. And for us, they work because when we then compare ourselves or the work that we do, um, we, we compare apples with apples in a sense. Yeah. So um, the, the tools that we are currently using, we've got a whole range of them, but it, it includes the WHO5 well-being scale. Yeah. Um, which is literally a list of five questions, um, which a learner then answers on a scale of one to five, saying that this is very true for me or totally not true for me. And um, ultimately, you get, get some kind of score. The mm -hmm. same with the brief resilience scale. It's not, it's not precisely a, a, a well-being scale, but at least resilience is something that is very, very aligned to, to well-being. Um, we also use the child outcome rating scale, which is just a simplified version, a little emoji version that we use for our younger kids. Yeah. It works like a charm um, because you, you must remember if we talk standardized, it's actually standardized European or Western. Mm -hmm. And that is that is actually one more than more often than not is, is quite a challenge in our context um, because what is standardized in that way, does not always directly translate to a kid from a low income area, um, it, not, not even speaking the kind of language that, that is being used. So in that way, what we what we try to do is we we obviously couldn't change wording in, in the in those assessments, mm -hmm. but we did a, a, a very professional uh, back translation into Afrikaans and also into Isikosa. Yes. Um, so that we can at least let the kids uh, then answer in their home language as far as possible. Mm. Um, and we get quite far with those three languages currently in the Western Cape. Yes. As soon as we move further further afield, we'll uh, probably have to do a bit more translations. Makes sense, makes sense. And also, um, so what is the overall impact that you foresee for community keepers? Because you did mention that every school should have a community keeper. It shouldn't just be a project that's in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, good, good question. You know what I would like to do? I actually pulled out a few quotes from kids, um, le learners that's been involved with us, learners that were 
as such clients. It's with their permission that I can share this. Yeah. Um, but I think it should give you a little bit of a feeling of what we mean to somebody, but actually what the growth is that happens in therapy or in in so when when kids in, engage with us. So the first quote is um, a learner saying the following, and and I had to translate it um, into English from the Afrikaans. Um, it actually sounded very cool in Afrikaans, so I hope it's going to work in, in English too. Yeah. But this person said, I learned to take things step by step, mm. to sort out a piece at a time, a piece mm. at a time, small chunks. Don't look at the big picture, sort it out small. Then I discovered how to talk about things that hurt and bother. And I think that is huge. That's for us. It's so often that kids say, they just don't have the opportunity. They don't have the space to just talk. Um, and, and we know how therapeutic just being able to talk, just being listened to is. Um, and then following up with, with a very positive um, end note, this person said, everything will work out over time, um, which yeah. really kind of gave me hope. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if a kid, kid with a really, really dire problem can, can start saying, everything will work out. I mean, that's that's hope. That's positive for you. Mm. And then the second quote I, I had to bring in because um, <laughs> therapy sometimes is not as straightforward. And um, the kids or our clients, um, sometimes they get referred by educators and specifically, very often, the boys being disruptive or being angry or being um, bothersome in class. Yeah. So you, you often, for starters, start with a client that might not be as keen um, and this this specific person was actually very, very uh, honest in what, what he said. He said, I was very reluctant to come forward to your office mm. since I've never believed in therapy or in counseling. <laughs> very honest. And then, but now I want to say thank you so much for your time and patience, especially for opening my eyes about the importance of talking to someone you trust Mm. When there is something bothering you, to open to somebody you trust. Yeah. Um, and I think ultimately, th those those are kind of the starting points for us. But in general, what we're aiming for is kind of the sum total of well-being or what, what, again, the World Health Organization says will happen as a result of well-being mm. or as a result of good mental health. And that is that People can start realize, realizing their full potential. And I think that is something which in our country, we're, we're constantly seeing the opposite of it. We're seeing people who don't reach it, who actually go backwards or yeah. use their full potential in, in such horrible ways. Mm -hmm. So reaching your full potential, um, being able to stay, to, to work productively, effectively and productively. And that specifically in a school context means that if your head is cleaned or if your head space is in a better space, yeah. you can actually start studying. And that neurologically um, is proven that kids who are in trauma that are not addressed actually cannot learn. But now, once a kid gets an opportunity to, to kind of just disentangle all of what's happening in their heads, mm. they can actually study productively. So there's, there's hope for our education system yet um, and for kids making it a success academically. Yeah. There's also then a component of being able to face or to handle the normal stresses of life. Now, that one is, is super interesting, sadly, sadly interesting in a sense, because we talk about normal stresses, but we know that currently in South Africa and, and even prior to the pandemic, we've had kids growing up in stressful situations that are way from way removed from normal, and they coped. Yeah. In some way, they cope. Yeah. Um, it, it it's not necessarily normal, but our, our kids are super resilient. Now, what well being is saying, or what increased well being is saying, is that you 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 should then be able to to cope quite easily. Mm. And then the last one, as a result of good mental health, is to be able to become a contributing citizen or a contributing um, member of society and by default, the country. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's also something that we could, could and should aspire to. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's, that's what we're dreaming about, is, is a place or a world or 
environments where kids can reach their full potential, where they can actually work, where they can actually study, where they can actually progress academically, where they can handle the normal stresses of life, where they can um, face, uh, 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 sorry, uh, where they can become contributing citizens then also of the world and then being able to face the normal stresses of life. Um, yeah. That's that's what we're that's what we're aiming for as outcomes for our learners. No, this is brilliant. It's actually mind blowing, and I find it interesting because um, you're preparing the next generation to to be functional um, social beings. Because currently our country is really violent, and it's because um, issues of mental health were not addressed at a young age. Because it's it's difficult to teach old people. And, and and young children are very teachable. Hmm. Yes, very, very much so. And and uh, physically, in terms of your, your neuro, what they call neuroplasticity, hmm. all those little pathways are still able to be changed and to be rerouted. So yeah. all, the, all the stories that we also say about old people cannot change, it's pretty true. Also in a structural way, whereas with our kids, they they are they are fluid. They they really can change. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. This this has been really special. We appreciate your work. It is a huge pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you. And lastly, can you just repeat the details if anyone just has an interest in contributing somehow? Everything. So if you want to contribute in any way, or if you want to make contact in any way. It's via our website, it's the, it's the easiest way. It's www.communitykeepers.org. Um, whether you want to become a, a part of the waiting list for schools, whether you want to look at our resources, or whether you want to contribute in any monetary uh, or other way, um, we would love to hear from you. Amazing, thank you so much, brilliant work. Thanks, Nobidula.